Hey guys, welcome back guys. In this video we are going to be talking about this third base case for the ID3 algorithm. Now, why is this so special that it deserves a video of its own? The reason this base case is so special is because this is the generalizing power of the algorithm. Now, if you don't remember what that means, that's okay. Generalizing is the ability to make a decision on the target feature value when there is not enough data to do one of these base cases. So I'll write it out and then I'll go through a little example. So if we keep branching our data and we get to the point where there are no instances left for a particular branch, this case is going to get hit. What this is going to do now is actually take the majority of the parent node data set. And once it does that, it's going to return. So one thing I'm gonna to have to figure out is how to give what that value is to this recursive call, so you might have to pass that in as an argument or something like that. But essentially what this means is if we take a bunch of people, we keep splitting them, we keep splitting them, we keep splitting them, and then, not the people, the group. <laughs> we don't wanna split no people here, okay? <laughs> we keep splitting the group, <laughs> and eventually we split, and there's, there's a group with nobody in it. Well, what we're, what we're going to do is go back a step before that split and then look at that group and figure out what the majority is there and use that for that particular split with no people. So let's draw that out. Okay, here is our data set. <laughs> and we start going through this algorithm and we're splitting on different descriptive features. So we take age, we split everyone who's under 50 and above 50. And then we do it again and we split, you know, male and female. And we're just looking at this half now because we're gonna we're just gonna focus on one specific branch. So you could do the same over here, but just keep getting smaller here for this example. So now all we have are, let's say, females who are under 50. So this group is females under 50. And then let's say we split on family history of diabetes. And this is how it splits. Oh, you can see that one of the partitions, the two partitions, has no data. So we split it, but this one kept all the people. Oh, that's not fair. And you know, this might still happen if we're doing a descriptive feature with a higher cardinality. It might split like this, to where one group has four, another group has one, and then a group has zero. And when this happens, what we're going to do is take the parent data set, meaning the node before the split. So get rid of the split here and just take this data set. And then we're going to take the majority at this point. So if we get to this point, let's say one out of five have diabetes. Well, then the majority is that most do not have diabetes. So that is what we would use in this situation. So the ability to generalize is seen because even though we don't have anyone in this group, we're able to make a likely prediction on what they will have. Because if you get to this point, the chances are you're not gonna have diabetes because in this parent set, only one out of the five have diabetes. So hopefully that's nice and clear. Essentially, it's just saying getting to this point you have to go through this case anyways you have to go through this group here and only one of the five people have diabetes so the chances of getting in this group and having diabetes is very low so it generalized beyond this group and looked at the bigger group here okay that's all for that <laughs> I'm gonna erase this algorithm now. If you wanted to see that in tree form, you could have it like this. So we split down less than 50 female history where we have yes and no. And we get down to here and our data set is empty. We don't have anybody there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it's just an empty box. <laughs> well, what we're gonna do is go up a node and grab all females and look at their majority. That is another example of how the generalization works. It's just going to go up a parent and then figure out what the majority is. So that is how an algorithm generalizes. Hopefully that was helpful. I hope you guys, please, please just subscribe and check, check out the next video, please. Thank you for watching. 
I'll see you then. All right, peace.